Good evening, everyone. Some time ago, I made a video demonstrating how to access StreamerBot's database and utilize its data within your C Sharp code subactions. Since then, Nate has updated the bot and added new C Sharp methods, which allow you to access data from the database without resorting to any sketchy hacks. In this video, I will demonstrate you how you can use these new methods and access the database the creator way. We will start from the basics. Let's look at how you can get, set and clear global variables. To get global variables, we need to use getGlobalVar method. To use it, just click this copy button and paste it in your C Sharp subaction. Now we need to modify it a little bit. First, we need to understand. Is this a persisted variable or not? Persisted variable will, well, persist between runs of the streamer bot. Non-persistent will be erased after streamer bot is closed. By default, it gives you a short version where second parameter is omitted. It uses default value of true and retrieves persisted variable. For non-persisted, you need to use false. Next, we will need the variable's name. Lastly, we need to know the variable's type. Of course, you can use object type, but to make something useful, you will need to eventually cast it to some specific type. I am using integer and string types. And of course, place to hold them. Now let's print them and look at the result in our log. Here you can see the values, zero for integer and nothing for string. But we never actually set these values, nor created these variables. We can check it by looking at the variables table by clicking this button. You can see, there is no variables. Then how did we get these values? If global variable doesn't exist, streamer bot returns default value for the type. The full list of them you can find in Microsoft Docs. Here is zero for integers and null for string. It's actually a reference to an array of characters. Be careful and always check results on reference types. Script will compile with no errors, but when you will try to run it, your script will break with an error. Now let's try and set some variable. For this, you need set global var method. Again, click copy button and paste it in your C sharp subaction. First parameter is the name of the variable. Name must follow general C sharp rules. But please, don't start them with underscore. And one specific rule for streamer boot is to use camel case. Second parameter is the value you want to save. It can be any type, simple integer, string or any class entity. Last parameter by default is true, which corresponds to persisted variables. You, again, can just omit it. If you need non-persisted one, just use false. Let's run this action and we can see our variables and their types, to some degree. For simple types, you will see the actual type. For any complex type, just string. That's how StreamerBot stores them. That's basically how you get and set global variables in StreamerBot. Now I will use my previous get command to grab couple variables which we just set. I just need to change the scope, run this action again, and we can see our values in logs. To change variable, you just need to again set it. You can even change its type, although it's not a good idea. Run action, and we see values and types changed. If you need to unset value, you got unset global var method. Again, copy, paste. All parameters are the same, like in get global var. You need to know is it persisted or not, and its name. Let's unset one of each type. Run the action and check our table. They are gone. If you were messing around a lot and want to unset all of them, StreamerBot got you covered. In global variables table, you just open the tab you need, open the context menu by right clicking, and you got the command to delete all. Also, there is a C sharp method for cleaning non persisted global and user global variables. At the time of making this video, they are available only in a beta version. Maybe by the time this video will be published, they will be already in stable. For the next part of the video, I will have to switch to the beta version. 
because another function which I want to show you is also not in the stable release yet. I will generate some variables. Here you can see them. Let's copy paste our clear methods and run this action. And all non persisted variables are gone. Next method is get global var values. Using this, you can retrieve all global variables at once, persisted by default or non persisted. It returns a list of variables with a special type, global variable value. It contains variable name, variable value, and timestamp of the last write. I will regenerate my globals to show you how you can use this method. Here I got a loop for each type of globals. They just print them in logs. Now let's try and print only persisted variables, which are integers and greater than 5. For this I need system link namespace and system core DLL. I will use where method and just print filtered variables. Run this action and we see them in logs. You can verify it by looking in the table. Now back to the stable release. Next we will look at users variables. Before we had global user variables, but soon they will be removed. You can see deprecation warning in the docs. Don't use them, they don't work anymore. Now user variables are divided by streaming platforms. I will show examples using Twitch's one. For other platforms it's the same. They got the same signatures, parameters and return types. Again, starting with the basics. We got two methods. Get which user var and get which user var by ID. They do the same thing, just use different user identification. First requires username and second user ID. Other parameters are the same, like in general global variables. Let me again generate some variables. Now we can see them in our table. I will grab this user's data and use it in the example. Username, user ID and variable name. Now our methods, which we need to modify a bit. Add type of the variable, I choose an integer and place to store it and of course logging. And we can see them in our logs. Set which user var and set which user var by id, set variable using username or user id. I will reuse same data from get example and set new value to this variable. First with username we can see value changed. And with user id it again changed. Also we can set same variable with the same value to select at list of users. Let's grab this method and list of ids, set the variable name and its value. Run the action. And we can see this value in selected users. Next we get unset methods. Parameters are as usual. I will grab them from other action. Username, user id, var name. And is this variable persisted or not? Run action and check tables. And this variable is gone from both tables. If you need to unset all variables for one user, you can do it with the next two methods. They again differ only in first parameter. Let's grab our test user and unset it in both tables. And now you can see all of its variables are gone. You will still see its name, but actually it's completely unset. If you close and open again this variable viewer, you will not see it anymore. There is also a method to unset the variable for all users on all platforms. You just give it name of the variable and it will do the rest. Now let's move to more complex stuff. You can get all variables with the same name from all users on selected platform. It works like get global var values. Let's copy it and modify as usual. I will grab this variable from all Twitch users and print it. So we need name, type and for each loop. Run this action and we get the users. Now we will filter them. For example, all integers greater than 5. We again need link for that and where method from it. Run this action and check logs. Now we get only users who meet our criteria. Now you should know how to manage your variables. Global variables are handy for storing some state data. 
User variables for filtering your users. Choose wisely. If you get any questions, ask in the comments or in my Discord. Links as usual in the description. Also, please the algorithm by watching this video, which it prepared specifically for you. Have a good evening and bye bye.